Welcome to the good life. Oh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. Welcome to the good life. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Good Life Friday, and I just want to let you know we're going to open your minds, heart, and soul because it's inspirational. And what was really inspirational last night was that game against the Falcons. I don't know if y'all were listening but to the show yesterday, but everybody voted against them. But you know who was for the Saints? Me, because that's a good life. It's opening your mind and living differently in the world. And you never know, you can always have a turnaround. If that wasn't inspirational for you, that today can be a new day, maybe it is. It's your day, so let's take it, let's embrace it, because that's what we're going to do today. We, Our special guest for today is Monica Pierre. She will be here after the break. She is an Emmy Award-winning journalist, author, and motivational speaker, performer, and everything else. She is in New Orleans. She's all over the region and the world, and so she's going to be here to open your mind to living differently in the world so you live the good life. But, of course, we always start the Good Life Fridays with one of the NPN organizations. So thank you, Tim Allen, for inviting them here today. We're really excited because we have B Legacy. And you're like, hmm, B Legacy, what is that about? Well, we're about to tell you. Um, NPN acts as a fiscal agent for certain organizations, including Son of a Saint. I know you all heard about uh, Sonny and all the great things that he does. And they're in a process in different um, organizations that are in a process of getting their 501C status. And, you know, they really help build them. And these organizations, you know, applying for grants and NPM really like kind of does a little bit of handholding and walks them through the process so they can live the good life, too. So that's why we want to introduce you to some of these organizations, because, you know, hand in hand, we can all live the good life. So I have B Legacy in the studio with me today. I have Kelly Sony, founder to my left, and I have Samanda Ford, president to my right. So, ladies, welcome to the good life. I am so excited to have you here. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Can you give me a little bit of information about B Legacy? I was talking to Kelly a little bit before, and when she told me, you know, how passionate she was about it and how it was actually started, I was like, our listeners really need to hear this. So give me a little bit about exactly why you started the foundation. Um, I started the foundation, so I live in New York, and I was actually looking to join a nonprofit, something where I can um, give my time in New York, and I just couldn't find anything that I really feel like I could relate to. Mm -hmm. Um, and education and for women in, um, in particular is very, very important to me. So um, basically, I was like, you know what, I'm going to just start my own thing. And I went to Xavier Prep, so I know the product. XU, <laughs> XU Prep. Well, and you didn't um, even know this. My dad graduated from Prep, and so did, like, a host of my aunts oh, really? and uncles. Oh, yes. yeah. right. The yeah, legacy, too. The right. legacy so, is, right. is deep. Yeah, yeah they had their 100th year. Yes. yes the centennial, you know, their yeah. centennial this year. So it's a great time to have you here and just to bring more attention to Prep. So go ahead. Um, so I called Samanda, and I was like, I think I just want to start something at Prep, a mentorship program. Um, Samana graduated the year after me. And so, you know, we've all been friends because that's what prep does, basically. Your high school friends become friends your, forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are your lifelong <laughs> friends. And then we called the rest of our friends, and it, it really just came out of that. And this will be our fourth year this year doing it. Absolutely. But it's really interesting because they have a lot of, you know, alumni situ uh, situation or – I don't want to say it, but a lot of alumnus that don't go back and, you know, give back. And I think it, 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 it says a lot to the school that you all decided to go back and reach back to these young ladies. I think B Legacy pretty much made us who we are, or PrEP made us who we are. It taught us how to live our life, how to achieve goals, how to go after what we wanted. So it was just right for us to make sure that it kept that legacy, that, you know, it, and that's where B Legacy came from, to make sure that they knew to keep striving and keep pushing because you can't achieve greatness. Yeah, Absolutely. and we wanted to, I mean, not to brag on my friends, but all no. my friends are doing <laughs> great away. things. Brag away. Y'all graduated from prep. <laughs> brag away. All my friends are doing great things, and so we wanted to make sure that the younger generation saw that. Like, Absolutely. this will be you in 10 years. Right. Absolutely. So it just made this sense. Is, this is the foundation, and this is where, you know, this is how you live the good life. We're examples of what you can do when you leave here. So make sure you take full advantage while you're here. And we always said that we never had a program like this that kind of told us what to expect. You know, once mm -hmm. at Catholic school, of course, you know, they teach you values. They teach you religious and every religion and everything. But we didn't know what to expect, really, when we got to college. So we're kind of there to tell them that and to kind of give them, you know, some real-life experiences. You yeah. know, let them know. Look. We, our, yeah, our mantra is we want to be the class we wish we had in high school. Absolutely. Oh, wow. No, true. That so, is so true. That's that's ultimately what we, what we strive to do. So give me a, a little bit of an idea of exactly what the program entails. 
Um, okay, so it's a six-month program, and we pretty much run along the school year. So when the school year opens, that's when we open. So um, the girls have to meet with us once a month. That's mm-hmm. mandatory. They can only miss one session, so they can only miss one out of six. Um, and we have Girl Talk Workshop. So it's a three-hour program. The first two hours is the workshop where we cover everything from financial literacy to oh, uh, personal absolutely. branding. Yes. To um, social personal media branding. Management. Oh, um, girl, aren't you glad that you know we didn't grow up on social media? <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I didn't grow but up they, on. they, somebody but really needs to explain world. that, yeah. right? So it's that's always a, a, a hot topic, <laughs> right? But how you brand yourself says a lot, and what you put on social media, that's it, your brand. It's everything, and that's everything. forever. Those pictures out there, forever, forever. right? Um, and then the the last hour, I, we serve them lunch. Um, and that's just because me and my friends love to go out and kind of catch up. Yeah, yeah. Like and we all eat. and we all live in different places, so we all like to. Whenever we're all in town, we like to go out for dinner mm-hmm. and just catch up on everything. So we wanted to kind of recreate that with the with program. The so mm-hmm. we always serve them lunch, um, and I try to serve them like real food. Like I, I try not to do pizza. Right. <laughs> I try to like get someone to cook, or we get it catered, or what have you, and just sharing over a nice meal. So girl talk is just the free floor where they can talk about whatever they want. And they know that it stays between us. So yeah, exactly. Good. So prep has been great. We're working with us, so no parents are allowed. The faculty's not in there. It's just us and the girls. So basically, what do you wait? They have a safe, secure place to, to express their feelings. It, it, Imagine it, it, that. <laughs> right. What a concept, and especially for young girls. And I, and I will tell you this. You know, I have a. a a son who's 11 and, you know, kind of, see, I'm one of three girls. So seeing a different dynamic and seeing kind of the opposite side of it. And I don't want to say this and maybe it's kind of mean, but I've seen, you know, sometimes girls are are mean to each other around that Absolutely. age. Absolutely. And it's, it, it makes me sad. Like it's really yeah. unfortunate. And, you know, being able to express that and kind of get that out and, you know, you kind of have like a, but you know what? a release. We really haven't had much mean girl. drama. Yeah, we. Right. it's always fun. I mean, it's like we have fun. Mm-hmm. And whenever we have guests, they they ne- they always leave say the same thing. I did not expect to have this much fun. Really? <laughs> yeah. They love the girls. They yeah. love just getting to know them. And for whatever reason, we attract really great girls we with do. great personalities. We always get like the Well, the you attract what you presence. are, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Even the quiet ones tend to come out after uh, yeah. we've worked with them for a while. And <laughs> right. we just love all of them. And really, and even with the girls that we, because we always keep up with them and what they're doing and everything. So most of our girls that are a part of B Legacy have gotten, like, the most scholarships at first. Wow. So that's something great that we feel like, you know, we definitely want everyone to be a part of. Yeah. Right. So and we def- and we keep in touch with them all at, through college. Yes. I was about yeah. to say, how long do you stay in touch with them? Through <laughs> like, college? And hopefully until, forever, yeah. And hopefully until that, you know, it'll be a cycle. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. they'll come back. Well, with me, be, with me being local, and even some of the girls, like, they'll go visit Kelly in New York, um, and then me being local, I try to stay. She always laughs at me because I'll go to their games, their volleyball games yes. and things, just so that they see that a familiar face is there and that we really mean what we say. Like, you know, we want to be big sisters, but we also want to be mentors at the same time. So we want to give them someone who's supporting them at all times. Right. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. This is amazing. I'm just like, how can we help, you know, grow the organization? Because... I think sometimes, you know, we always focus on our young men, but girls need to know that they're loved. They need to know their worth. They need to know, you know, to respect themselves because that's how, you know, you're going to get respect. And so what your organization is so important. If somebody wanted to get involved, how can they do that? They can email B Legacy Prep. So that's B-E-E-L-E-G-A-C-Y-P-R-E-P.com. So BLegacyPrep.com. Um, me and Samanda at, will respond to them immediately. At gmail.com. At gmail. What did yeah, I say? Okay. Dot com. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at gmail. We're getting it. <laughs> so you, be legacy prep dot com. Be legacy uh, I, I keep saying that. Be com. legacy at gmail. Be com. legacy prep. at. No. Be legacy prep at gmail. There we go. Be legacy prep <laughs> at gmail dot com. Yes. And be, on Instagram, be legacy prep. And we'll have the email on there if they want. Because a lot of people work through Instagram now, which is <laughs> yes. crazy. Yes. So be legacy prep at gmail.com or be legacy prep on Instagram. There we go. Be legacy prep Instagram. Yes. Be legacy prep Instagram. I'm going to say it three times. Oh, be legacy good. prep Instagram. Three locks times it, it locks it in. <laughs> yes. There you go. So you already know yes. where I was going with that. Is there a, um, a special story that you can give us, you know, without giving a particular name of, you know, maybe one of the girls that have really touched your heart that you've seen her grow or come out of her shell? Cool. We know who. There's so well, many. I'm going to say her name. I know. Yeah, it's no names, no names. It's no a names. lot of them. Um, well, that's a good thing yeah, that you have so many to choose from. Thing. Just um, some that were, when we first started, that were 
re- like very quiet. Mm-hmm. I have to deal with them one on one as far as because um, we actually do a silent auction at the final retreat. So okay. during the season, we give them be- with what are called be legacy, be legacy bucks for participation. So I'm the keeper of the be legacy bucks. So I get the calls <laughs> and the emails about she manages the bank. Yes, I ah. manage the bank. So they want to know if they qualify for the retreat. And on the retreat, we have great gifts like um, iPads and oh, tickets to jazz fest. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so I'm keeping up with my credits because <laughs> yes. I'm going making sure I'm friends with the banker. Right, and the girl who was actually the valedictorian this year, and I guess now I just gave it away. Um, in the beginning, she was just really, really quiet. Now she's been there with us since her first year prep. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's always been very quiet, didn't talk much, and you would think, you know. Very intelligent, very outgoing. However, at the end, she would always be struggling with her Be Legacy Bucks because she didn't talk much. So uh, just dealing with her, um, she. but for whatever reason, between the second to last and the last <laughs> meeting, she would just talk the entire time because she's like, I have to be on this retreat. Right. And so it was just always great to really see that. And we never realized that she had never missed a meeting. Mm. So that... um. To hear the girl. Like over the years. Yeah, over the <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah, Never. Yeah. Wow. Like the entire time. And she was in all four years. She, she was used like, to start I'm with getting, I'm going to be on this retreat. Yes. <laughs> and then to just hear the girls call us about stuff. Because we do have a male panel um, mm-hmm. once a year, mm-hmm. which the girls love, where we do speed dating. Like they do speed dating with the guys. So they'll know how to talk to guys. Yes. Because that's what, um, you know, you get a little intimidated sometimes thinking that young girls will talk to older guys. But we make sure that the guys are really, you know, men who are trying to help them. And, right. you know. We just want them to know how to talk to a male. Right. And then the day, because that's what helps them. Yes. Progress. Right. Exactly. Um, and just be secure when they do it. Right. Yes. Exactly. Hearing them say when they got to college, stuff that a guy told them would happen <laughs> happens. And right. And they were able to, you know, to be like, forewarn mm-hmm. them. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. When you're forewarned, it makes a difference. Yes. And, you know, especially, you know, everybody doesn't have the luxury of having, you know, a male in their life. Absolutely. So you giving them that, you know, that little nugget of information to stick in their pocket. And when it comes true, they're like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And you know, because, you know, my dad gave me little nuggets. And I'm like, my daddy told me don't go for the okie dokie trying to slide me one. Uh Uh-huh, I'm not not going for it. I'm not going for it. My dad said all men were bad, so. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we are so excited. And one more time, if someone wanted to get involved and, you know, help Be Legacy, you know, reach out to more young women, how can they do that? Be Legacy Prep at gmail.com on Instagram, Be Legacy Prep. And we also have a GoFundMe account that we start mm-hmm. basically because, you know, of course, it's fully funded by us. Mm-hmm. So we also always um, are looking for people who want to invest and help right. out just to be- make and sure. And especially that- with the centennial year, year of, you know, prep, all of you preppers out there support this organization. If if the alumni don't support it, then who's going to support it? Absolutely. You know, right. so once you show up and show out, then more people are like, oh, okay. So all you preppers out there, I know y'all are listening. This mm-hmm. is how you can support. You have a GoFundMe page. What's the page? Yes. GoFundMe.com backslash Be Legacy Prep. Right. There you go. And it's no, B-E-E. Just, be legacy. just Be Legacy. Yeah. Okay. It's B-E-E. Legacy. Yes. yes. Oh, that's important. Yes. It's um, B. Like B. Like Z. <laughs> like y'all. Yes. Yes. Exactly. yes. So just to get a little bit into back to NPM. How did you get involved with NPM? Like, you decide to start an organization, you're like, you know what, I need a little help. So You know what, um, Sonny from Son of Saint. Oh, really? Actually, um, I was talking to him one day, and I, I was telling him about our program, and he connected me with someone at um, NPN. Shout and out to Timbaland. <laughs> exactly. And it really just spawned from there. And I, they were literally about to cut off applicants, and we had to rush <laughs> yes. our application and, like, 48 hours, but thank God we got accepted, and it's been a great So how has your experience been with MPN? Awesome. Just really great people just trying to help, and that's the thing you don't get very often. You know, you have a lot of people who want to, you know, tell you, okay, go do this, 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 and this, but they actually, you know, lay it out for you and really want to help us. And with us having busy lifestyles, it's really great to have somebody to kind of do that back, that leg work. Right. (laughs) Right. Right, exactly. You know, Timberland is great, and, um, she definitely holds our hands the way we need to be, need to be held because doing nonprofit work is hard. It's right. like, you know because you it's it's not a product per se. Right. Where you just put it on the shelf and sell it. You know. Exactly. So um, in terms of getting our five hundred one c three and everything, um, which we are working to do, she's just been great um, in terms of just. Uh, resources, right, and just teaching us the the step by step process to do it. And look, she got us on the radio. Right. <laughs> but think about that. It's it's the same thing that you do for the girls. You reach back and you put, you have your hand and you're guiding them so that they can blossom and be their own woman. Well, NPN does that with nonprofit organizations. She holds your hands for a little while and she lets you grow and blossom. So I want to thank awesome. NPM. This thank is our you. this is our favorite segment during the week 
uh, yeah, Timlin. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank B Legacy for being here. And I will put your information on my social media as well. So that's TGL Radio Show, TGL Radio Show on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, The Good Life Radio Show. We will be right back with Miss Monica Pierre. And if you don't know her, make sure you stay tuned because you will when we get back. This is Eileen. This is Good Life Friday. And I'm stay tuned. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, start for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. I need help. My hair is a mess and my man texts me telling me to be ready for eight. He has a surprise. What am I going to do? My stylist takes forever. I got you. Call Ringlet Salon. I just left there. Where? Ringlet Salon. They took me within minutes and had me in and out in no time. Very professional and I scheduled online at ringlets.com. For real? Girl, for real. Does Ringlet Salon hook up your roots? Looks like I got a perm and you know I'm anti-chemicals. Ringlet Salon has my hair soft and bouncy. I'm getting the Brazilian blowout express next week it eliminates frizz for six weeks six weeks okay i'm all about ringlet salon where are they located ringlets has two locations one at 4712 paris avenue and one in the hilton hotel on the river that location validates parking for four hours and is open on sunday perfect for a working woman like me that's all i needed to know i'm gonna be fresh for my man you will if you schedule your appointment at ringlets.com that's r-i-n-g-l-e-t-t-s dot Com. Bye. Go and make my appointment with Ringlet Salon now. LNR Security provides the good life. They make their mark in the security arena by providing excellent security services for more than 35 years and are licensed in more than 13 states. LNR Security's team comes with a wealth of experience from the military, law enforcement, and law enforcement training. Their personnel is comprised of more than 200 employees trained in video monitoring, special event services, convention services, armed and unarmed security guards, ticket takers, executive security, personal bodyguards, hall monitors, and critical infrastructure personnel that are TSA trained. LNR security services are provided on a 24-hour basis and have expanded to the newest technology, including video monitoring. Find them on the web at www.lrsecurity.com or call them today at 504-943-3191. Again, that number is 504-943-3191. Live the good life with LNR security today. Eric Caulfield represents a new kind of leadership for the state senate. He's honest, independent, dedicated to public service, and his qualifications are impeccable. Eric is a Morehouse man, graduating Phi Beta Kappa and earned his master's and Ph.D. degrees from MIT. He was appointed by President Barack Obama to serve as a White House fellow and served as chief policy advisor to former Newark Mayor Cory Booker. He's an urban planner, scientist, inventor, loyal Democrat, and today a candidate for the Louisiana State Senate. Eric's work for President Obama here in New Orleans resulted in $4 million in construction jobs, street improvements, housing for nearly 70 homeless New Orleanians, and a renewed commitment to helping the people he wants to serve. That is why I went into government, to get things done. I'm Eric Caulfield, and I'll bring a new kind of leadership to the State Senate. Vote for Eric Caulfield, number 41, State Senate, District 4, paid for by the committee to elect Eric Caulfield. Sick and tired. We're all sick and tired of Bobby Jindal cutting our schools, keeping tens of thousands from getting health care while he runs for president. That's why so many of us are voting for Democrat John Bell Edwards. 
John Bell Edwards is the only candidate for governor who supports an increase in the minimum wage, who voted for equal pay for women, and John Bell stood up to Bobby Jindal when he attacked our hospitals and universities. David Vitter and the Republicans all oppose even a small minimum wage increase and equal pay for women. They would be just like Bobby Jindal, and we can't have that. Election Day is Saturday, October 24th. Early voting starts October 10th and goes through October 17th. If you are sick and tired of Bobby Jindal, vote for Democrat John Bell Edwards. Paid for by Louisiana Families First. Not paid for or authorized by any candidate or candidate committee. Life happens, and when you need medical attention, quality and accessibility of care are most important. Bossy Medical provides urgent care, physicals, and primary care. Bossy welcomes most insurances, Medicare and Medicaid, and also accepts currency. For your convenience, we're open till 10 p.m., and appointments can be made through our website, www.bossy.com. That's B-A-U-S-E-Y.com, or call 577-2258. Bossy Medical, 577-2258, 8070 Crowder Boulevard. WBOK, 1230 AM, The People's Station. Welcome to the good life. Oh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the good life with me, Eileen. We are here on the Good Life Friday, and you know I like to warm your heart and soul and give you a little bit of inspiration for your day and for your weekend. I am so excited about this show. I have been excited since Monday because I was looking for inspiration, and I was looking for a little bit of information on how to grow my show and, like, what steps to take. So I was discussing it with my sister, and she said, you know who you should talk to? Monica Pierre. And I was like, (laughs) duh. And just to give you a little background, I went to St. Monica's Catholic Church. And Monica Pierre went to church there, too. Yep. And so I remember sometimes she would, you know, do the readings at church. And I would listen to her, and I was like, oh, her voice is so cool. And then she was on the radio, and she'd be doing all these things. And I just thought, you were so Cool. So now that I'm in radio, I'm like, you know, I'm attempting to follow in some of your footsteps. So you were the perfect person. She, you know, took me in and she sat me down and we had a conversation. And I was like, you know, this is really the way that I want to grow. So I want to thank you so much for sitting down and taking that time with me. And that's what the good life is about. You know, I talk to people on the radio every day about, you know, who are those five people around you? And if you want to do something and take that jump, you have to talk to people who know more than you do. So obviously you're one of those persons in that arena. So thank you so much for being here. I am literally so excited. And if you don't know, Miss Monica Pierre is an Emmy award winning journalist, author, motivational performer. She is the CEO of Pierre Principal Communications. She's um, a producer and a host on like six radio stations. I can go on and on and on. And she's like, nah, nah, nah. But, <laughs> nah, yes, nah, nah, nah. but you deserve it. You are. I think you're amazing. Oh, phenomenal. Thank you. That's thank my you. word. Phenomenal. I like the cool. Uh, I'm like cool, cool. I like cool too. <laughs> Ali, first of all, thank you so much for having me on The Good Life. It is indeed a pleasure and an honor. And I remember, of course, you, know, you, were, you were the last one of the group, but uh, the Carters were always such a beautiful family going to St. Monica. And congratulations to you Thank and you. to your sisters and your dad and your mom for all that you've done to inspire people throughout the years in your various arenas. Well, thank you so much. I'm really excited. And, you know, the family as well, I feel like your family sort of as well. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited about this. And just to give our listeners a little bit of an idea, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to let them know how people got started because everybody thinks, you know, everybody just kind of made it. Everybody does, and but they, there, there's a path there that, that took them through that. You know, everybody kind of had to trudge a little bit. So what was your path to getting, you know, into radio? How did you decide to get into radio? Was somebody like, oh, you have a great voice? Oh, this will be no, it. not right? even close. I had a Cajun vo- sounding voice. Did I'm you? from southwest Louisiana, a town called Church Point, oh my Louisiana, where we all sound like Bobby A. Bear. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you look like, you sounded like Bobby A. Bear. But I really wanted to be an actress. That was really? my very first job. 
joy. I don't know where that came from, but I wanted to, I could always see myself acting in movies or on stage. And as a little girl, I'd watch the Emmys or I'd watch the Grammys and I had my acceptance speech already prepared. And of course, I was always waiting for my dramatic roles. Yes. I, I would have a deathbed scene, the whole nine yards. And we were the first in our family to go to college on, on my, you know, my, with my parents. So I thought that I should not major mm. in theater. So I majored in education, and I said, okay, because we love our teachers, the mm -hmm. nuns. We love all the people who were there doing that. And I was sitting in class at the ULL, which was USL at the time, mm -hmm. and I'm going, I don't want to be a teacher. Mm. So I changed my major, but I didn't know to what. So I have finally a course catalog. I'm going through it. I end up on the P's, and I see the word psychology, and I'm wow. thinking, I don't know what that is, but that sounds awesome. Right. right. I want to be that. So I changed my major, and I'm sitting in class, and we're learning about, you know, Pavlov's dog and the whole thing, and I'm bored <laughs> out of my mind. I'm going, is this it? When do I get to, like, help people? <laughs> so I changed my major again. Right. But now to what? Mm. So a friend of mine, Myra Jalavet, I always call her name, and she said, look, I'm going to the campus radio station. Do you want to come with me? Wow. And I said, well, I'm not studying. <laughs> I'm in between majors, of course. <laughs> So Eileen, she sits down at a studio at the campus radio station. She puts her headphones on. She uses her beautiful ebony fingers. She turns on the button for the microphone and says, you are listening to KRVS in Lafayette, Louisiana. I am Myra Jolivet. And I did exactly what you're doing. My eyes got big. Right. My mouth open, gaping open. I go, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. <laughs> And that's how it started. So I changed my major for the third time and got into it. But here was the issue. As I started to do and turn in my assignments, mm -hmm. I would get critiques, inarticulate, poor pronunciation. <gasps> Voice needs a lot of work. Wow. Remember, we all sounded like Bobby Hebert. Right. Bobby, I love you if you're listening. Right. <laughs> and it works for sports sometimes. It works for, it, for certain people. Right. It, it does work. And I said, but I can't keep changing my majors. My father was threatening to take me out of school and put me back in the sweet potato patch. Right. So, <laughs> you were like, I got to make this <laughs> I got to find something. So I said, what would I have to do? So as if God or angels or something, I found a raggedy tape recorder and I started to tape my voice. Mm. You know what I discovered? What did you discover? My professor was absolutely right. Mm. Inarticulate, poor pronunciation, my voice needed a lot of work. Wow. So I set out to change and alter my voice. Not, I was still Monica, but there were things that I needed to do to have a more professional broadcasting sound. And right. I worked on it. And well, I changed it. Well, obviously it worked. <laughs> Exceptionally. <laughs> I, I think you did that. Oh, thank you. So that's, and then I've been in it ever since. So what, how has your company grown as of now? What are you doing now? One of the things I've learned, particularly when you're in broadcasting, you quickly have to figure out how are you going to be the captain of your own soul? Mm. How are you going to be the master of your gigs? How are you going to reinvent yourself and evolve as Things change. And so I set out to that I would never be dependent on one thing Hello. ever, ever again. Hello. And that's what I did. So uh, I looked at my talent. So I'm doing more speaking, more performing. I'm creating these opportunities because they're not there. You know, the truth is the life we truly want does not exist. Wow. I know that's provocative. Yes. And you go, Monica, what are you talking about? We're going to have to find a way to create it. Thank you. The life we want does not exist. We've been sold a bill of goods. Thank you. We have to go out there and make it happen and be brave enough and accepting enough that it's going to look all kinds of different ways. Mm -hmm. One season, you might have 20 things. One season, you might have two things. One season, you might have 15 things. <laughs> it just depends. It just depends. Yes. And I love how, and this is a perfect segue into this, because one of your focuses is fear on trial. Yes. Can yes. you give us a little bit of background of exactly what is fear on trial? Remember, I wanted to be an actress. And I was whining and crying about not being on, on stage anywhere. And so God said to me, you know what, Monica? I'm sick of you whining. And it was that feeling that you have, that quiet moment. Yes. And he said, if you want that to That intuition, that, that intuition. Like gut feeling, the, yes. one, the one that a lot of us ignore every now and, yes, and then. Yes, yes. Uh -huh, you that followed quiet, it. quiet, <laughs> still intuition said, if you want to act, go act. I'm tired of you complaining about this. So when I said, okay, I'm going to act. Huh? And then all these characters and thoughts started to come to me about what 
would a dreamer look like? What would be her scenario, his scenario? So I started thinking about fear and what would fear look like and sound like? I said, would it be a dragon breathing fire? Would it be a monster? And I decided that it was nothing more than a whisper. Mm. That all of these things that we are listening to from fear and not of God are whispers that tell us, Oh, Eileen, you have no business being on the radio. You've never really gone to school. You know? Or the whispers that say, start your own business. No one in your family has done that. Actually want a life where you get married first, work on your career, and have children. Right. No one's ever done that. So that's how I created that. And I said, okay, I'll write the whisper. But what if we could find fear, arrest fear, and put fear on trial for stealing the hopes and dreams of mankind. Because that's what fear does. And fear is a lie. It's an illusion. It's something we create in our minds. It can, t- it can be overcome. You have to feel the fear and do it anyway. Absolutely. And generally, once you walk through that doorway, you're like, that's all it was? That's all it was. And that's what I was listening to? That? For 5, 10, 15 years? For a lifetime? Right. And all I have to do is stop listening and saying, I hear you, but I'm ignoring you. You know, maybe you're trying to be helpful but here, but you're not. (laughs) Right. Somebody told me something the other day. They were like, I'm going to, I'm going to travel. I'm going to do this, that, and the other when I retire. Mm. What if you never make it to that day? That happens so much in life. You know, we have family members who said, okay, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do this. I'm going to just stomach all this abuse, all this stress, and then I'll get to the place where I can travel with my family. But how often do we hear stories and, and know stories of someone who gets Alzheimer's and never gets to travel never, never or gets happens. sick and dies, and it never, ever happens? We can been, putting it off. And they've know. been held by fear for a lifetime. Absolutely. So exactly with fear on trial. What exactly happens to fear during the during the trial, literally? Fear, fear has to stand trial. So fear is presenting its closing arguments. Because mm. fear is so arrogant. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's like your ego. It's and so it, out of control. It tries to get you. So fear won't even have a defense attorney. Fear says, I'm defending myself. Ah, arrogant, no, yes. Okay. And so fear presents this closing argument. And during the scene, fear says that everyone's blaming it for all of the woes of mankind. Mm. But fear says, all I did was whisper these things to you, and you stopped working on your dreams. Mm. You decided that you weren't worth it. I go through a series of some of the whisperings, and he said, you want to know the secret of my existence? Do you want to know what keeps me alive century after century? And fear says, well, mankind, it's because of you. Mm. I can't do anything without your permission. Mm. I exist because of you. And then there's the verdict. And fear is found guilty and banished. But fear says, fools, you will never get rid of me. Never. Because that is the journey that we have with fear and the whisperings and the voice. That when we go ahead, okay, okay, I'm big and bad now. I will not listen to fear. I will start my business. Then the first month, You don't get the invoice paid the first time the client leaves. Then you start saying, well, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe Mm -hmm. I didn't do this. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe they were right. And fear is always trying to figure out and and creep up and say, psst, psst, psst. Guess what? (laughs) They don't like you. (laughs) Guess what? It'll never happen. And you have to constantly be on guard and battle against fear. So if someone, I know that you do these, uh, I don't say productions, but it kind of is, you know, and y'all don't get to see her in the studio with her <laughs> arms and, and, and being, uh, I'm serious. Look at Lee's going back and forth, but y'all don't get to see the production. I get to see the whole production. So I know people hire y- your, uh, prince, uh, Pierre principal. Career mm-hmm. principal for, I mean, to discuss this with their employees because right. so many times our employees are stuck in fear. And to take your companies to the next levels, and this just isn't for large companies. Sometimes this is for those small businesses who want to move on to that medium-sized business or that medium-sized company that wants to become, you know, conglomerate. But they're stuck on fear, like, I can't do it. How do you get them to move to the next level? Because I know they can 
you really move mountains for people. Oh, oh, you do. Wow. Well, I'll talk about that. And it'll be, you know, it's really part of your growth plan as a business, you know, whether you're small or just starting off. So, again, to ex- examine what is going on, have the strategy, and recognize when fear is hampering. Now, we're not talking about the fear that says, don't go down that dark alley. Right. That's not the fear I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, don't go the down fear, the dark alley. The fear between you and your dream and you and your growth and you and what you want out of life. Well, we are going to take a quick break. We are here with the Monica Pierre. I am so excited she is in the studio today. And I know you all remember Monica's moments. Well, guess what? They are still here. And we're going to get into some of those Monica's moments when we get right back. This is Eileen. This is Good Like Friday. And stay tuned. St. Michael Baptist Church is seeking a full-time pastor called by God to serve as the spiritual leader of the congregation. The pastor is responsible to God and the church to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, to teach the Bible, to provide Christian leadership in all areas of the church, and to engage in pastoral care of the congregation. The pastor is also responsible for the services, membership, and promoting the spiritual interests and growth of the church. In addition, applicants must meet the qualification of pastor provided in Scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-7 through 7. The pastor should have strong communication skills, both in the pulpit and interpersonally. Interested, ordained, and licensed ministers may apply to St. Michael Baptist Church, P.O. Box 1752, Laplace, Louisiana, 70069. The deadline for all resumes are to be postmarked by 5 p.m. October 26, 2015. Any candidate's package postmarked after that date will not be considered. People are raving about Lil Dizzy's Cafe. I liked it so much I went back the next day for breakfast. I went for the lunch all-you-can-eat buffet and I had to be rolled out of it. I've had many gumballs in this city and I will say hands down, Little Dizzy's is the best. I felt loved when I ate the bread pudding. I literally almost cried. You heard it here first. Lil Dizzy's Cafe is New Orleans' number one Creole restaurant. Open seven days a week, Lil Dizzy's pulls out all the stops with a mouth-watering all-you-can-eat lunch buffet featuring the best fried chicken and gumbo in the city. Enjoy a hearty breakfast and be sure to ask for the seafood omelet loaded. Lil Dizzy's Cafe, 1500 Escalade Avenue in the historic Treme. For reservations or takeout orders, call 504 569-8997. For catering and private parties, call Miss Jerry at 504-324-9567. That's 504-324-9567. Lil Dizzy's Cafe, the best in the city. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com, or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Hello? I need help. My hair is a mess and my man texts me telling me to be ready for eight. He has a surprise. What am I going to do? My stylist takes forever. I got you. Call Ringlet Salon. I just left there. Where? Ringlet Salon. They took me within minutes and had me in and out in no time. Very professional and I scheduled online at ringlets.com. For real? Girl, for real. Does Ringlet Salon hook up your roof? Looks like I got a perm and you know I'm anti-chemicals. Ringlet Salon has my hair soft and bouncy. I'm getting the Brazilian blowout Express next week. It eliminates frizz for six weeks. Six weeks? Okay, I'm all about Ringless Salon. Where are they located? 
Ringlets has two locations, one at 4712 Paris Avenue and one in the Hilton Hotel on the river. That location validates parking for four hours and is open on Sunday. Perfect for a working woman like me. That's all I needed to know. I'm going to be fresh for my man. You will if you schedule your appointment at ringlets.com. That's R-I-N-G-L-E-T-T-S dot com. Bye. Go and make my appointment with Ringlet Salon now. Kingdom Connection Productions presents Saturday Night Praise, Life After the Storm, honoring over 45 years of service with the Macedonia Church of God in Christ Music Ministry, Saturday, October 24, 2015, featuring Dove and Stellar Award nominee Ernest Pugh and Michelle Prather, member of Kurt Carr Singers, and much more. Macedonia is located at 3015 Louisa Street in New Orleans. Doors open at 6.45 p.m. Show starts at 7.30. Reserved seating is available. For more information, visit www.snpnola.eventbrite.com or call 512-853-0155. Saturday Night Praise, Life After the Storm. WBOK 1230 AM, the People's Station. Welcome to the good life. Oh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on The Good Life Friday, where I warm your heart and your soul. We are here with the Monica Pierre. She's an Emmy Award-winning journalist, author, and motivational speaker, performer, and the list goes on and on. And if you want some more information about how you can get in contact with her, follow her on MonicaPierrePresents.com. That is Monica Pierre presents.com you know you can reach out for your company and i know she wasn't gonna do this for herself but i'm gonna do it for (laughs) you you can you know reach out for your company she will inspire them to live the good life because you want to take your company to the next level and sometimes it it really does take that you know those retreats or something because we were talking about a little bit during the break because everybody thinks it was easy but it's hard sometimes it's really hard and you know what no one promised us a rose garden nobody said it was going to be easy i think those who go after their heart's desire and their dream or their purpose think that just because I've made that mind shift or that paradigm shift that it's going to be a cakewalk. Oh, no. Your faith (laughs) walk is not a cakewalk. You have to walk in blind faith sometimes. There are going to be things that come at you. There's going to be disasters. There's going to be some. But again, it doesn't take away from what you want to do. You're just going to have to be grown Absolutely. And realize that whatever comes your way, you can handle it if you have a plan in place, if you have strong intentions, if you're willing to stay in this game. Look at the saints. Hello. Look at the saints. Most Hello. people would say, oh, my God. Oh, done. Stick a fork in it. Never. But you continue every game. You show up with that intensity. Every game you show up determined to win. Now, you may not win. You know, it could have gone the other way last night, but, but they it could have been a lesson it could have that been, you were yes. supposed to learn Absolutely. because the prize is right over the horizon. But right. if you stop, you know, that walk in faith, it's over. But if you walk to the horizon and then you can see it and it's there and you're like, oh, right. but what, what, what if you didn't jump? What if you didn't jump? And what if you say, oh, OK, it's hard now. I quit. Who does that? You said to the world, this is important. I want this. I am willing to go through this. And the first obstacle that comes along, you throw it away, you throw out on the flag or throw it on the gauntlet or you grab your ball and go home at the half. No. You stick in there. You figure out, okay, well, I, I zig this way. Well, maybe I, let me see if I zig that way what's going to happen. But I'm going to, I'm going to stick out this game. This is what I really want to do. I love sports, not because I know anything about what I'm looking <laughs> at. Or watching, but I love the life lesson, the mm. determination, all of those stories. How do you, despite the boos and the second guessing and the criticism, you show up brilliantly every time. That's what these world-class athletes do. That's what Drew Brees does and right. all of them do. That's what Serena does. 
all the time. You love those comeback stories because nobody chose the Saints. Right. Nobody right. chose the Saints. Even here, right here in the studio, they weren't cho- choosing really? the Saints. And I was like, look, y'all can play around if you want to. <laughs> we're about to show up and show out. We're going to be on national TV. But you have to, and, and we're saying this in jest, but if you want to take yourself and put yourself on that stage, you have to have belief in yourself first and love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, no one else is going to love right. you either. Right. And look at Serena. She could have said, I've done enough. Right. Uh, I've no, no one's really done as much as I've done, but they continue to push themselves. Perseverance. Look at Tiger Woods. I mean, even though it's been difficult, he continues to figure out a way. And is it the way it used to be? Probably not. Will it be more? Probably so. Maybe not. But he's going to show up every time and figure it out. So small businesses, you know, you want to grow. You want to get bigger. Yes, you're coming up against some obstacles, but that is no reason to abdicate your responsibility to move this forward. Absolutely. And I think sometimes, especially with small businesses, since we're talking about it now, sometimes the you have it in your executive team, but they don't let that trickle down necessarily to the entire organization. Because when your organization believes, you can see a difference. You know, everybody is putting in that 150%. And then it, it just grows to the customer base and your services are, you know, are astounding at that point. But you really have to reach back to the employees. It's not always about the executive staff. You can't do everything yourselves. It's a family effort. It's a community effort. And that's how you see things like that grow. Right. And you're the visionary. Uh, Goldman Sachs, they have the 10,000 small businesses program here in New Orleans. And they've, I think about 400 of them have grown, gone through it. Yes. But it's for growing your business, not for new upstarts. And what they're teaching them to do, I've interviewed them on the air, is that they're teaching you to be on your business, about your business, but not in your business. Oh, wow. All that day-to-day stuff that you will not let go because no one can chop the vegetables the way you can. Really? Come on. Right. You know, be the visionary, be the leader, be the one charging and leading the growth as opposed to the one doing everything. You know, you have a team. You have those employees. You have that staff. Start to trust that this will grow and this will happen. It's very interesting that you said it because we're listening here and everything you say is so motivational. And you've been having your Monica's moments for years now. And you're, you're, you're laughing, but they really do touch people's hearts. And it's something that they can carry throughout the day, like a little mantra sometimes. So is there, I'm kind of going over over one here, and one was, you know, dare to cross the road. And so like it, it rolls into exactly what we were talking about. Dreams do not come with guarantees. Getting to the other side is often plagued with unforeseen detours, delays, and challenges. But each brave step moves us closer. Let us trust in our talents, believe in our gifts, and have faith as we dare to cross the road. (gasps) I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and, and I have a little image where the mama duck yes. is leading the little ducks across the road. That's kind of like you and me right now. Right, it's a highway. <laughs> it's a highway. And oftentimes we go like, okay, I want to get across the road. Okay, God, give me everything I need. I trust you. And then you go like, you start hearing the, the 18 wheeler coming down. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> that, oh that my truck. God, I can't turn around because I'm halfway. Let's keep going faster and right. get across the road. <laughs> but it, it's taking those chances and belie- believing in yourself. And I think that's that's where some people have a little bit of a problem. They want it, but they don't believe in themselves. Right. So what was there a moment where you really believe in yourself? And you're like, if I want this, this is what I'm going to do. Where that belief system just kind of kicked in for you. When I looked at, again, the type of business that I've been in, especially in, in radio and television and, and the media, things change so much. And I just said, I'm going to have to make this happen. And it was a conversation that I had with a uh, general manager. It was years ago. I was at the station. And I was looking at my paycheck, and it was like, oh. And I said, and I guess he saw my face. I said, oh, this is not enough. And he goes, oh, that's enough for you. Uh, oh, my God. What? I wanted to punch that man right in the throat. <laughs> I really did. And I'm looking at him going, I cannot let people determine what's enough for me. Mm. It was not enough. I wanted more. Well, I could have argued with him and said, well, you're going to pay me more. I'm walking. Or I could find ways to get more of what I wanted Mm -hmm. and be okay with it looking different. Be okay with it being not just one thing, but different things. Right. And speaking. And people say, like, you just have so many gigs. I said, I love gigs. I love, we have time for gigs. Right. (laughs) Right. We have time. And you go, well, okay, I have children. I have this, you know, demanding job, whatever. I'm going, but you're playing solitaire. (laughs) <laughs> on your job quite a bit. 
You could be using that time to when you get off work. I, I don't advocate people walking out on their jobs. I'm not right. that kind of person. But, you know, you have more time than you think you do. Mm-hmm. Love Empire, but you might want to turn Empire off every now and then. Right. Is you know? Empire, you know, helping pay the electricity that Empire is, is using? Right. Are you finding ways to give your dreams life and legs? Mm. You could use that time to do that. You know, if you want to sing, then sing. Go there, there, senior citizens in places. Start singing. Start putting your gift out there and start attracting the monetary reward that comes with it. Be brave enough to say, well, what do you do? Well, what day is it? I do this on Tuesdays. I do that on Thursdays. And be okay with that. I think that's what we want the approval of other people to say, oh, yeah, I get that. I get what you're talking about. Right. A motivational performer. What, what, what was that? That doesn't make any sense. You're an Emmy Award winning journalist. Go do that. And I'm going, but I do that and this and this and, as you've often said, I'm this and. And. I'm this and, 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 and. And on Tuesdays, but on Thursdays, uh, right? This, I do that, this and right. this and, and that, this and that. Right. And what I love is when we had our conversation, we really got into how everything changes, and we discussed it was our thoughts. So I wanted to go into this Monica's moment, ruler of our thoughts. Our thoughts dictate our actions. Thoughts of doubt, worry, and fear lead to a wasteland of inaction and deferred dreams. Thoughts of possibility purpose, and gratitude for our gifts lead to solutions and a willingness to step forward with courage and boldness. Thoughts dictate actions and decisions. We are the ruler of our thoughts. We are. We're the ruler of our thoughts. Even when fear is whispering, we are sitting on the throne listening to that court jester tell us something. Mm. We rule our own thoughts. And if you go, well, even when you decide not to, you have made a decision. Right. You have taken an action, right. an inaction, but mm-hmm. it's still an action. But look at all of the of the beauty and the power in that. We get to decide, change our minds, do what we need to do. But it all starts in our head, in our mind, in our minds. Everything everything started with a great idea. The only difference between those who are successful and those who aren't are the ones who took that leap of faith. And decide to take that work, that first step. What does Martin Luther King say? You don't have to see the whole staircase, but just take the first step. Keep taking that step, and you're going to see the staircase. It's going to unfold, but you have to have that belief and that faith to take that step. And you've done that in so many areas of your life. Just like you, you said, a, a Emmy Award winning um, writer and, mm-hmm. and producer and right. actor. If you would have just stopped at radio, we wouldn't even know all these other things. Right. But look at the beauty of it is. Radio is still in the mix. Right, exactly. You know, I'm doing all these other things. You're doing, I mean, you're helping business owners. You're helping people have the good life. You were bold enough to say, even though I, to the world, it doesn't look like I belong here, I absolutely belong here. Right. And you are encouraging and inspiring others to find a path and a way. I told her during the break, I'm going to embarrass you, oh, but God. I said, you absolutely have found your path. Oh. Absolutely. Please continue forward. Please continue on. There's plenty on the planet for all of us. The beauty about God's love is that with 7 billion people on the planet, we can all grow and flourish and be all that we were created to be. It can happen. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, she's going to have me tear up right here on the good life. There's no crying on radio. There's no crying on radio. (laughs) Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited. If someone wanted to reach out to you, because obviously I reached out to you, so I want to thank you for everything that you've done for me. And I know that she can do it for you, and she can do it for your organization, and she can do it for the world. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you, how can they contact you so that they can grow their business, bring it to the next level, so that they all can live the good life, too? Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to give you my my number. It's 504-267-2310, 267-2310. Or you can email me at Monica at Pierre Principal.com, and that's the P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E.com. And I'm going to just start rebranding everything. I'm going to make it simple. <laughs> no, yeah. and I understand. And if you need a Monica's moment or you're having a moment at work, make sure you go to MonicaPierrePresents.com. MonicaPierrePresents.com. There, it's called Motivation Na- Nation. Hit the button 
and you can just choose one. There are pages and pages of Monica's moments, and I know you all remember them. It's a part of your heart. It's a part of my soul, and that's what we do right here on the Good Life Friday. We touch our souls, and that's exactly what you've done for us today. So thank you so much because you literally are the good life. Oh, and so if you, you want any of this information, make sure to follow me on social media, Twitter, Facebook or Instagram, The Good Life Radio Show. On Twitter and Instagram, it's TGL Radio Show. That's TGL Radio Show. And I will put um, Monica P- Pierre Presents on there. So I'm going to put a link to your website oh, right on there. You oh, for my that. goodness, absolutely. So and I'm going to cool. tweet it out and everything else. <laughs> and if you wanted to get involved with The Good Life, you can give me a call at 504-400-7127. That is 504-400-7127. 407127 because that is the good life. That's what it's all about, y'all. It's about reaching out. It's about warming your heart and warming your soul and taking that first step in faith. And thank you, Miss Pierre, for being here because that's what you've done and you have inspired me to continue. So and thank you. You have inspired me. I'm excited to be here. I get yes, excited. Yes, that's the good life. You know, good energy. Good energy. You know, it attracts good energy. <laughs> So thank you so much. Lee's looking at us like, look, y'all got a love fest going on. Yes, we do. This is the good life. That's what we do here. So we hope, I I don't hope, I know I warmed your heart. And so I want to send everybody off with a who dat. This is Eileen and I'm out.